Hey everyone, welcome to Math Talk. I'm your host, Brian Heisler, and today we're going to start a little mini-series on how to solve inequalities. So let's get started. I think some good information to have before you solve inequalities is kind of how to approach them and what you need to do and how you want to think about solving them. So here's some information that I hope helps when you get to solving inequalities. First of all, the steps are very similar to those you use when you want to solve equations. Really, the only difference is that instead of an equal sign, you have an inequality symbol. Uh, so you still want to go ahead and isolate the variable, get the variable by itself. You still want to use the opposite operation in your steps. So when you're solving it, you know, if you have like a plus sign, to solve it, you use minus. Or if you have a multiplication sign, you use division. It's always the opposite. The other thing you want to uh, keep in mind is that with the inequalities, you want to keep the symbol the same direction throughout the entire steps, um, unless your last step is multiplying or dividing by a negative number. And we're going to get to at least one of those examples, probably a couple of them, um, throughout this series. So make sure you pay attention to those specific examples. So um, knowing that, I think there's a couple more I want to share with you. When you're graphing your solution on a number line, because with inequalities you can actually graph it on a number line as opposed to just getting a number as an answer, um, if your inequality has a less than or a greater than symbol, then your graph on the number line actually has an open circle over the number, and we'll get to that. If your symbol is a less than or equal to sign or greater than or equal to symbol, then you're going to actually have a closed symbol over the number um, when you graph it. The open circle really means that it includes all the data except that number. The closed circle represents all the data, including that number, depending on which direction you draw your arrow. And again, we'll get into solving that in a little bit. Um, we're also going to see a little bit later in this mini-series um, some inequalities where there are two inequality symbols and how to approach those. Really what you want to do is kind of separate it into two different inequalities, solve for each of them, and then kind of combine your answer. And that's actually going to be what we're going to cover in the last video in this series. So make sure you check it out when we get to it. But knowing these, in, these pieces of information, let's go ahead and try a couple of examples on how to solve inequalities. So we're going to jump right into it. We have an example that says 4x minus 7 is greater than 5. So again, it looks just like an uh, equation, except instead of an equal sign, you have an inequality. So we're going to go ahead and solve this just like normal. We're going to go ahead and isolate our variable. We will add 7 to both sides. And then what we're going to get is, let's see, 4x, these go away, greater than 12. And then our last step is going to be to divide by 4, divide by 4, you get x is greater than 3. Okay, so this is just, you know, x is greater than 3, that's the answer that we have, but we want to make sure we graph it on the number line. So I'm going to draw a number line here, it's going to be a very, very simple number line. Um, what I tend to do when I grow, draw these out is basically draw a line with the answer, 3, no other numbers. Um, and so because we have a greater than symbol, there's no or equal to, we have an open circle. And x is greater than 3. So I want any number that's greater than 3. Well, on a number line, the numbers that are greater than 3 are over here. So I would basically just draw some kind of shading going to the right with an arrow pointing that way. So it's all the numbers except 3 that are greater than 3. So let's look at one more example. 13 is less or greater than or equal to 2x minus 1. So again, I want to isolate my variable. So to do that, I'm going to get rid of this 1 by adding it to both sides. It goes away over here. 13 plus 1 is 14, greater than or equal to 2x. Now I'm going to get 2x to just be plain old x. So I'm going to divide by 2, divide by 2, and I get 7 is greater than or equal to x. So this is the numerical representation of my answer, and now I need to draw it on a number line. So again, I'm going to go ahead and draw a very simple number line, and I'm going to have my number 7 in the middle. And 7 is greater than or equal to x, which means x is less than or equal to 7. So this has an or equal to sign, so I'm going to draw a closed circle. And x is less than that number, so I need anything that's less than it, Less than is left, 
So I'm going to draw an arrow that way, and this is the solution on a number line. X is less than or equal to 7. I have one more example I want to show you, and then we will go ahead and end this video. So negative 5x plus 2 is greater than 17. Let me get rid of this 2. That's gone. I get negative 5x is greater than 15. Now, in one of my steps, I said if your last step to solving this is dividing or multiplying by a negative number, you have to switch the symbol. In this case, I'm dividing by negative 5. So that means I have to switch the direction of my symbol. So instead of x is greater than this number, it's x is less than this number. In this case, negative 3. And so I have my numerical example. I need to draw it out on a number line. So I'm going to draw my number line, negative 3. It's just less than. There's no or equal to, so it's going to be an open circle. And all the numbers that are less than negative 3 are to the left. Less than is left. Color it out and draw my arrow going that way. So when you get to these examples, I hope that you know, this helps you a little bit. Again, you want to really treat it just like an equation. Use opposite operations. And remember, if your last step is dividing or multiplying by a negative number, you have to switch the direction of the symbol. So I hope this helps. Make sure you check out the other videos in this series. Thanks. Hey everyone, it's the Brian Heisler, your host of Math Talk. If you feel like after you're watching my videos, you think you may still need some extra practice in the classroom, you want to take classes with us, visit our website at www.gedes.com. It will take you right to this website and you can find locations and where our classes are being offered. If you live in one of our you know, neighboring counties, you can definitely visit our website, uh, geds.com, and you can click on this link down here, FDOE Adult Educational Contacts. This will list the different contacts of the adult ed programs in the counties throughout the state of Florida. So you don't necessarily have to be in Palm Beach County to take advantage of adult and community ed classes. If you live in one of these counties, reach out to these people and they'll get you set up with classes in their county. Thanks again for watching.